In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to raise a sum to a power. So what I mean by this is simplifying an expression that looks like that. So x plus 2 raised to the second power. So a sum raised to a power. Um, now, first and foremost, this is not x squared plus 2 squared. You don't just sprinkle the exponent over there. And I'm going to prove it to you first by using some numbers instead of an x. So if I replace the x with a 3 and I follow the order of operations and simplify what's inside the parentheses first, I get 5 squared, which is 25. And if you think it's just to sprinkle the exponents and you do this, you get 9 plus 4, which is 13, which is not equal. So you don't just sprinkle the exponents. And I can double check this with my calculator. If these expressions are the same, then when I go to the table, I'll get the exact same table, and I don't. See, so at 3, I get 25, and 13, those aren't the same expression. And if I graph them, I see that they're not the same graph. This one was shifted to the left, this one was shifted up. So you don't just sprinkle the exponent, there's something else. There's actually something missing. And in order to figure out what's missing, you have to understand what x plus 2 quantity squared is really asking. So x plus 2 quantity squared is really x plus 2 times x plus 2, a double distribution. And what I mean by that is I'm going to take this x plus 2 and I want to distribute two things over it. I want to distribute the x, so it's like x times x plus 2, and I want to distribute the 2. And this is the other way of writing this expression. So x times x plus 2 plus 2 times x plus 2 is the same thing as x plus 2 times x plus 2. And then when I simplify this, I get x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 4. And then I get x squared plus 4x plus 4. So this thing here was missing from this whole x squared plus 2 squared. And if I want to check and see if this one works, I replace this bottom one, and then I go to the table, and oh look, it's exactly the same. So this is what was missing, um, this kind of multiplication here, multiplying the x times the 2 and the 2 times the x, okay? So now let's look at another example. That was the explanation example. And of course, I can use subtraction instead of addition. So if I want to look at the example x minus 3 quantity squared, I need to remember that's really x minus 3 times x minus 3, and then I can do my distribution. I'm going to distribute x, and then I'm going to distribute negative 3. So it's x times x minus 3 minus 3 times x minus 3. And so now I actually do my distributions. I get x squared minus 3x minus 3x plus 9, being careful with distributing the negative, of course. And so I get x squared minus 6x plus 9. You know, and I want to make sure that's correct because it's really easy to mess the sign up. So once again, I can use my trusted calculator to check to make sure I did this right. So change this to x minus 3 and change this to a minus 6x plus 9 and double check. If my tables are identical, which they are, that means I simplified correctly. So x minus 3 quantity squared is x squared minus 6x plus 9. Now this kind of multiplication is incredibly important in algebra, especially the second semester of algebra when we talk about things that aren't linear. And so there are a lot of different ways to remember this multiplication. And I showed you two, really. Um, I showed you the arrow method. Right, which is just to remember that you can draw these little arrows to tell you that the x gets distributed and the 4 gets distributed. You can write it like this, where the distribution has been separated out to the two distributions that it really was. And there is a super famous way that's in every book, and I think your 7th grade science teachers show you this when you're working with, I want to say, Punnett squares. 
and they show you something called FOIL, where F stands for first, O stands for outer, I stands for inner, and L stands for last. And I'm going to use this example to show you what FOIL is, okay? So F first stands for the first term in each factor. So X times X, this is the F in FOIL, okay? And then O outer is the outer terms. So X times four, that's the O. The inner are the two inner terms, and the last are those two last terms. So FOIL gives us X squared, four X, four X, and 16, and then you add them together and you get X squared plus eight X plus 16. There's something that I don't like about FOIL, and it's the fact that FOIL only works when you're multiplying two terms times two terms. If I made this, you know, x plus y plus 4, and that x plus 4, then FOIL doesn't work anymore because you have three terms in one thing. And that would be a triple distribution, not a double distribution. So that's why I like this method and drawing the arrow method better, because if I do have x plus y plus z squared, this is x plus y plus z times x plus y plus z. And what I'm supposed to do is multiply x times all of that, y times all of that, and then z times all of that. And uh, that's three, six, nine multiplications, and there aren't enough letters in FOIL. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a different way than these three, which is my new favorite way. And it came about when a former student of mine named Leo asked me if you could do multiplication of these types of problems just like the old school multiplication. And what he meant by the old school multiplication was, you know, when you're in elementary school and you learn how to multiply two digit or three digit numbers together. You remember you have to do seven times two, and then seven times three, and then you had to move over a space and do two times one, and then two times three, and then you added them together. So what Leo asked was if you can do this setup with something that's like x plus four times x plus four. Because if you think about what this type of multiplication is, you're really distributing the seven over the 32 and then this 10 over the 32, right? So it's this, it's literally the same thing. So I can multiply four times four and I can get 16 and then four times X and get four X, scooch over a space, do X times four and get four X and X times X, which is X squared, and then add them together and get X squared plus eight X plus 16. And so I never did it that way. I learned it the FOIL method or with arrows and so I named this method after that student, and we're calling this the Leo B method. So ever since Leo B asked that question, I've been teaching the Leo B method, and I've been using the Leo B method because I actually like it better. It helps you keep track of what you've multiplied and what you haven't multiplied, and it's very convenient when you add stuff together, especially when I give you bigger problems. So let's say, for example, I ask you to multiply x plus 2 not squared, but cubed. So I want you to multiply it out three times. And so the way to do this is to multiply these two together first, and then you get some answer, and then you multiply that answer times the x plus two. And using the Leo B method, your work is actually you know easy to follow, and so you can make sure you do everything correctly. I'm gonna go ahead and multiply these two together first using the Leo B method. Two times two is four, two times x is two x. X times two is 2x, x times x is x squared. So now I'm gonna add all these terms together. I get x squared plus 4x plus four. And so that's what goes here. I have x squared plus 4x plus four. And I have to multiply it by another x plus two. So it's really easy with Leo B. I can just put another x plus two down here. So two times four is eight, two times four x is eight x, two times x squared is two x squared. Then x times four is four x, x times four x is four x squared, and x times x squared is x cubed. So now I add all these together, I get x cubed plus six x squared, 
plus 12x plus 8. And this one I should definitely check. And I check and my tables are identical. That means that this is indeed my answer.